Hi everyone and welcome to this week's crime and punishment story. This week I am covering the story of Charles Brown and the murder of John O'Donnell which took place at the Albert Edward Dock in North Shields in 1902. I hope you will find this story interesting. But before we begin, can I just say, if you do enjoy this video, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here or haven't already done so, then do please consider subscribing to the channel to help support the content we create. Thank you. And I would just like to add, as I always do now, that I do record these stories live, so I do sometimes make mistakes, which I always try to rectify. So I hope this does not spoil your enjoyment of the video. Due to the nature of this story, with it being about men who were on board a ship berthed at North Shields, the backstory for those involved is almost impossible to find. So it is quite basic. Charles Brown was said to be around 24 years old in 1902, so would have been born in around 1878. He was born in Kentucky in America and his parents are unknown. It is also unknown how he came to be on board the steamer Beacon Light, as he had previously been working as a farmer in America. But he had been on board the ship working as a fireman for around six months at the time the crime was committed. He was a blind in his right eye due to an earlier accident, but the details of this accident are not given. John O'Donnell, the victim, was said to be around 36 years old, so would have been born in around 1866. His parents are unknown, however it is known that he was born in Limerick in Ireland. He worked on the steamer Beacon Light as a fireman. I must add here that some reports do suggest he was 46 years old, but sadly I cannot confirm which age is correct, but I've gone with the one that is mentioned more often. No details are given as to whether or not both men are known as great drinkers. However, it is known that most, if not all, of the men on board the ship do like a drink on a regular basis. On the 26th of February 1902, some of the men on board the steamer Beacon Light, which was berthed at Albert Edward Dock in North Shields, were about to sit down to some lunch when it seems an argument broke out between several of the men. And as crazy as it may seem, the argument was apparently about some soup that had been served that day. This resulted in several of the men fighting, one being Charles Brown and another being Joseph Jordan. It would seem the fight got very much out of hand and Charles began to run towards the ladder to get off the ship. As he was doing this, he pulled a revolver from his coat and aimed it at the man, men who he had been fighting with. He missed Joseph and a man named John Sharp, but he hit John O'Donnell in the chest, with O'Donnell crying out that he had been hit. Charles continued to fire behind him while making his way off the ship, and by now he was being chased by several of the sailors, and once on the dock, this alerted the attention of the river police. Inspector Mayne was quickly on the scene and took Charles into custody and within minutes he was told that a man had died and Charles Brown was arrested for his willful murder and taken to North Shields Police Station. Details of the inquest are very sparse, so I will include the basic details that I have. The inquest was opened at the Percy Arms in Percy, Maine by Coroner Rutherford. It was stated that the body of John O'Donnell was currently at the mortuary at Northumberland Dock, and Charles Brown, who had two black eyes at the time, was present for the inquest. John Sharp said he had identified the body as being that of John O'Donnell, who he had worked with in the past both on the Beacon Light and on another vessel before that. He stated that John was a native of Ireland, and he said that he had been in the area where the fight had taken place. He said after Charles had tried to shoot at Joseph, he had fired again, this time aiming at him. But he had been lucky and the shot had misfired. He said he did not believe that Charles had been drinking at the time. Joseph Jordan stated that the initial argument had between had been between himself and Charles Brown. He said they had fought with their fists and others had joined the fight, some simply to try and separate them. 
James Gargan, a carpenter on board the Beacon Light, said he had seen the men fighting and had seen several trying to separate them, but he did not know how Charles had got the black eyes, but assumed that it had been during the fight. Dr. Martin said he had performed the post-mortem on the body of John O'Donnell and had found a single bullet lodged in his chest. This, he said, would have caused his death almost instantly and the bullet exactly matched those found in the revolver belonging to Charles Brown. Inspector Main of the River Tyne Police said he had captured the accused as he was running from the ship towards Snow Shields. He believed at the time that some 30 to 40 men were chasing him. He said Charles had a revolver in his hand when he caught him, and he had had to knock this to the ground. Charles, he said, stated, I have done for one and I'll do for another. After this, he said he took Charles into the police cabin and charged him with the death of John O'Donnell, to which he made no reply. He was then taken to North Hills Police Station. When asked, he said Charles had not asked for protection from the men chasing him, but he said he did have a lot of trouble keeping the men away from Charles, and he also said that Charles did not hand him the revolver willingly. He stated that he had examined the gun and it had gone off in his hand, resulting in Joseph Jordan being shot in the foot and a feather bullet had lodged in a wall. The coroner's statement is unknown and it is also not known how long the jury took to decide their verdict. However, it is known that the jury at the inquest found Charles Brown guilty of willful murder and he was committed for trial and moved to Newcastle Prison. I did not find any details of a funeral for John O'Donnell. He was not from the area and it seems that none of his family were in the area either. In this case, it is possible that his body would have been sent home to his family or that the funeral was taken care of by the owners of the ship he worked on, but none of this can be confirmed. But I did not find any details of a headstone for John O'Donnell anywhere in the northeast area. The trial took place at the Moot Hall in Newcastle in early July before Mr Justice Bruce. Charles was charged with both willful murder and attempted murder and he pleaded not guilty to both charges. The details from the trial are much more detailed and it is now that we finally get to hear the full story of this very tragic case. Joseph Jordan said he was a Seagorn fireman who came from South Shields. He said he had argued on board ship with Charles Brown. He claimed that Charles had attacked him with a knife, and it was at this point that Charles had begun to head for the ladder to get off the ship. Charles, he said, had stood near the top of the ladder, looking down, and then drew a revolver from his coat and said, I will blow your brains out, and then fired towards him. He said he ducked, and the bullet hit John O'Donnell, who had been behind him. He said John cried out that he had been hit and Joseph said he rushed towards Charles, who was now on deck, and twice saw him point and fire the revolver at John Sharp, but the gun misfired. He said Charles then made ashore, chased by the ship's crew and some dock labourers, until he was eventually caught by Inspector Main and disarmed. Joseph was then asked several questions, and he replied to those, saying that there had been no argument between Charles and O'Donnell. O'Donnell had simply tried to break up their fight, and he had not seen O'Donnell strike Charles with his fist. He had been drinking that day himself, but he said he was neither drunk nor sober. This raised a little bit of a laugh in the courtroom. He then added that he was not staggering around drunk. He said the ship was due to sail the same day, and he and some others had been ashore bidding goodbye to friends. He had given the prisoner no provocation for the attack, and it was not true that those on board had joined together to attack Charles, nor had he heard anyone say, don't let him get off the ship. He ended by saying he did not see anyone with a knife other than Charles, and he did not know why he turned to attack them with a revolver. Charles had most certainly not been stabbed by O'Donnell, and he did not know when Charles had been hit in the face to cause his blackened eyes. James Gargan gave very similar evidence to that at the inquest, only adding when asked that he had not heard anyone say, we will not have any Yanks on our ship. 
John Sharp said he was a seaman who lived at South Shields. He gave very much the same evidence as Joseph Jordan before him, adding that when he was chasing Charles along the deck, he had turned and pointed the revolver at him, saying if he followed him, he would shoot him. John said he did continue to chase after him, and Charles twice turned and fired at him, but the gun misfired. A Danish carpenter on board ship said there had been around 15 men in the forecastle on that day. Most of them were the worst for drink and noisy. He said he heard cries of, Down with the yank, and we will get the yank out of the ship. He did not see the argument, but he had seen Charles go up the ladder. He was running away. He appeared to him to have been badly attacked and was in great danger from the men chasing him. John Cairns, a donkey man on board the Beacon Light, said he had heard Charles say something about the soup, and Joseph had immediately struck him in the face and pushed him up against the door in the bulkhead. Charles had said he did not want to fight him, but Joseph struck him again. He said he then heard another voice cry out, saying, Stand back, it is my turn now. And Charles was attacked again, this time being knocked through the slightly open door onto the ground. He said Charles jumped to his feet, but more men were surrounding him. He did manage to make his way to the ladder, but not before two or three men had hit him in the face. He did not see him go up the ladder as it was out of his vision, but he did hear the sound of gunshots a few moments later. He said he had heard some of the men cry, don't let him get away, and Joseph shout out, pull him down and we will kill him. This, he said, was before he heard the gunshots. When Asti said Charles had been working with him that day, he was perfectly sober. He said Charles had not insulted Joseph, and to him, Charles had been trying to get away from the men from the moment the argument started. He had been told of the knife, but he did not see one during the fight, and afterwards he had searched the area and no knife was found, only a pipe belonging to Charles Brown. John Book, boatswain on board the Beacon Light, said he had heard John O'Donnell say, If no one can drive this yank out of the ship, then I will. He had seen the fight take place and the crowd of men were very dangerous. He had been afraid for his own life. Charles had tried to get away from them several times and he felt he had been in great danger. He was not able to see the ladder from where he had been standing and he did not know how Charles came to shoot O'Donnell. Dr. Martin said he had been called to the ship on the day of the shooting. However, John O'Donnell was clearly already dead when he arrived. He said he had also performed the post-mortem on his body and John had died from a single gunshot wound to the chest and it was his opinion that he would have died within minutes of being hit. Inspector Mayne gave similar evidence to that at the inquest, adding that when Charles had been taken to North Shields Police Station, he had been charged in the presence of Chief Constable Hewish, and he had made no statement. He continued by saying that when he had taken the revolver from Charles, he had placed it on a table, and when examining it, it had fired twice by mistake, and one bullet had hit Joseph Jordan in the foot, and he had had to be treated at the Tynemouth Workhouse Infirmary because of this. He said the gun had two further bullets which appeared to have been lodged in the gun where it had misfired. He did agree that a great crowd of men had been chasing Charles along the dock and some of them were using very strong language. And although Charles had not asked him for protection, he did feel that he needed it. He said he had had to knock the gun from the hand of Charles Brown and it was not true that the man had handed him the gun without being asked to do so. And when questioned, he said on the way to the police station, Charles had made a simple statement saying, I had to do someone or they would have done me. The judge then asked if Joseph Jordan had any marks about his body from fighting and Inspector Main said he had a scratch and a cut near his lip and one of his hands was bleeding and these were all fresh wounds. The defence then addressed the jury. He was quick to point out that Inspector Main had now changed the statement made by Charles Brown, no longer saying that he had intended to shoot somebody, but that in fear of his life he had had to do it to escape from the crowd of men chasing and attacking him. He said, as an American, Charles probably did not know much about English law and had spoken the words to the policeman without knowing what he was saying, but had later spoke of having no choice or they would have killed him. 
He continued by saying that the jury must be certain of the facts and a guilty verdict of murder would result in death for Charles and there was no way back from that. There was no doubt that he had inflicted the fatal wound, but it was not premeditated, but actually in self-defence. He ended by saying that this case had two kinds of witnesses, those who agreed with the statement made by Joseph Jordan, all of who seemed to have been under the influence of drink at the time, and then those who were sober, and although they had given evidence for the prosecution, had actually supported the defence in stating that Charles had been attacked and was in fear of his life. Charles Brown then gave evidence on his own behalf. He stated that he had been on the ship for around six months, and on the day in question he had not been ashore and had been in the forecastle when Joseph came in. He said Joseph had asked who had slopped the soup, and Charles said he had told him that he had. Joseph, he said, then became very angry and hit him in the face several times. He said he did not hit him back. He was then in the alleyway and James Gargan also hit him and knocked him against the door. Several men then, at then attacked him and he was knocked to the ground. He said he managed to get back to his feet and tried to escape towards the ladder. He was attacked several times before he made it and when he was on the ladder he turned and saw the man behind him with a knife in his hand and this man was John O'Donnell. He said he pulled his gun from his coat and afraid for his life he fired. He then began to run along the deck chased by several of the men. He did indeed tell John Sharp not to follow him or he would shoot him but although Sharp continued to follow he said he did not attempt to shoot him. He said once ashore he made for the police station and on seeing Inspector Main he said he told him take this gun and keep these men off me. He said it was not true that the policeman had had to knock the gun from his hand. He said he had bought the revolver as a present for his brother and he had had it in his pocket that day as he intended to give it to the captain on the ship for safekeeping as it was against the ship's rules for any men to carry firearms. He had not bought any bullets for the gun, but the lady who he bought the gun from had put five cartridges into it. He had never had a knife in his hands that day, and he had not stabbed anyone. He ended by saying that when he went up the ladder, he had been in fear of his life. He wanted to get away from the angry mob of men who he felt meant to do him harm. Two witnesses were then called, James Kerr of North Shields and Emmanuel Wilson of South Shields, both spoke given very much the same evidence. They said that on the dockside they had seen Charles go up to the policeman and hand him the revolver. Both said the policeman had never knocked the gun from his hand. They said he had given it over willingly. The judge, in summing up, said it was for the jury to decide if this had been a case of murder or manslaughter. A man's life was a most precious thing, and if Charles felt that his was in danger, was he, as the defence suggested, entitled to take another man's life to protect his own, thus making him not guilty? Was this a case of an attack due to great provocation, and not intending to kill anyone, Charles killed Joseph while in fear and wildly shooting at anyone in close range? If, however, they believed he had deliberately intended to kill O'Donnell, then they must find him guilty of murder. The jury did not retire, simply taking five minutes to discuss the case before the foreman spoke to say that they found Charles Brown guilty of manslaughter, but they recommended him to mercy on account of the great provocation he had received, and the second case of attempted murder was dismissed. The judge then spoke to Charles, stating that he would take into consideration the recommendation of the jury, and therefore he would send him to prison for a term of four months. And this verdict was received with loud applause from the public gallery. I did not find any further details of Charles Brown after this case, but I would think we could assume that he would have, on his release, headed back to America and back to his previous life as a farmer, possibly. No doubt thinking a life on British ships was not for him. I have to admit to finding this a very odd case. It seems to me that Charles was someone who was not well liked on board the Beacon Light, and the only reason seems to be because he was an American. 
It seems the men were simply looking for any excuse to start a fight and something as simple as soup was enough to set the wheels in motion that led to the loss of the life of one of the young men on board. Did Charles ever attack anyone with a knife? Well, there does not seem to be any evidence to support this and no knife was ever found. And if Charles saw someone else with a knife, then no doubt this would have been hidden by the other sailors before the ship was searched, so it would never have been found. It oddly seems that the men involved all told the same tale of Charles attacking them without reason and that he fired at them saying he would blow out their brains. Yet those who were not involved with the fight but saw all told a very different story. It was certainly an odd one, as even the policeman told a different story to the witnesses who watched from the dockside, and I can only assume that Charles, being American, had something to do with all of their behaviour. Were the jury right to find him guilty of manslaughter? Well, I do believe they were, as he did take the life of another man, and I don't feel he was entirely innocent, but he certainly wasn't guilty of murder. But what do you think? Was this just a case of the other sailors on board taking a dislike to Charles and attacking him for no reason? An attack that then went badly wrong? Or do you think there is any truth in the story that Charles was the one who attacked them for no reason? And do you think the jury reached the correct decision? Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I do hope that you have found this sad and tragic story interesting and I do thank you all very much for watching and I do hope to see you all again very soon.